society doesn't actually champion health. So when you actually go down it's a true. journey of trying to optimize your health, trying to better your diet, trying to improve your sleep habits, reduce alcohol, things like that, you're actually going against the fabric of society. I started taking on some incredible benefits that I yeah. never would have kind of expected. Like my sleep went through the roof. One of the things by going plant-based, you're really dramatically reducing your risk of having a cardiac event. So mm. heart attacks, strokes. Don't feel like a lot of people in society realize just how good they can actually feel. Like I think a lot of people maybe physically are probably at like 30, 20, 30% of their capacity. Yeah. Mm. Have you had any health concerns transitioning to a vegan diet? You're not defined by where you, where you come from. Yeah. And I think that's a big message that I always yeah. want to tell people that. Like you have to be able to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Like be comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you grow up in ends, you don't realise it when you're confident, but you have an audacity to do things that ordinarily most people wouldn't be able to do. Welcome back to the Takeout Experience. We have a special guest in the building. How are you doing today, Jeffrey? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, like I was telling you offline, um, busy, busy, yeah. busy weekends. We're trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's yeah. It's been, it's been, um, it's been exciting. Yeah. Weekend, but yeah, it's also been busy. So I want to start off with this question. I always yeah. start off with this question. Who is Jeffrey? Who is Jeffrey? It's a very good question. I was actually listening to a podcast yesterday about a lot of people maybe not knowing who they are. Mm. So I would say I'm someone who is who wants to leave an impact on the world particularly in the space of health and wellness i'm someone who's very health focused but want to open the conversation out yeah. to other people to educate them about specifically plant-based nutrition but also just how to be healthy overall so i guess that could maybe describe me in a nutshell and i'm sure we'll go into a yeah. few more bits and bobs as we go on yeah i'm excited to know actually and yeah, we'll, we'll go. We don't want to spoil it too much. But yeah, I'm really, really particularly excited to know why you went down the, you know, the vegan route and also why you have such a focus on health. Because I feel like in this day and age, I think it's important, but I feel like we don't have enough conversations about it, yeah. to be honest. It's not, it doesn't seem like to be the main yeah. priority and we only yeah. have one health, but yet exactly. we take our eye off the ball. So yeah, it's uh, very, very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so starting with this. So where are your parents from? Ghana. Ghana, Ghana. Yeah. Were you born here? I was born, born here, yeah. You were born here, <laughs> okay. But have you been to Ghana? I have, yeah. You have, how, yeah. how often do you? So it's you funny because <laughs> before this year, I've yeah. been twice this year. Before okay. this year, I hadn't been for nearly 30 years. Ah. Which is pretty crazy. Okay, so, uh, so then what made it twice so, this year? So my fiance, okay. who we met last year, um, she goes regularly. So she had two cousins that were getting married this year in Ghana, mm. so we just went. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So th so that was yeah, the reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and do you feel like going forward that you're gonna be trying to go at least at least once a year? 100%. At least once a year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 on my list as well. To, I mean, I'm saying it's on my list. I'm going Ghana actually. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been. I'm going um, end of August. So I'm, nice. I'm I'm looking looking forward to yeah, seeing yeah. how it differs to Nigeria, mm. to Sierra Leone, Gambia. Mm. Yeah, to see what- Where are you from? I'm from Nigeria, Nigeria. and Sierra Leone, yeah. But yeah. like, to be fair, like the people that I have spoken to, I have friends from Ghana, but mm. the people that I've spoken to that still live in Ghana, very, very friendly. So, okay, so so you mentioned that you um, were born in London. Whereabouts yeah. did you grow up in London? So I grew up, not as I said, not too far from where mm. we are now. So I grew up in the kind of Shoreditch, Old Street area. Mm. But I actually went to, so I went to primary school, it's kind of very close to that area, but I went to a boarding school actually from 11 to 18, which was okay. in Sussex. Ah, so I spent okay. a lot of time away from home. Oh, nice. Um, good experience, good yeah. people. Like, I, I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, it was mixed school, like, played a lot of sport when I was there. So, yeah, that's kind of how my kind of adolescent wow. years played out. Most of your life was actually in Sussex and not London in terms of that teenage Yeah, years. yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, when I was in the school, I'd go there, I'd go mm. to the school, like, for three weeks at a time and mm. then come home for the weekend. And another three weeks, you, you board, so you stay there. Yeah. And then you get half terms. We get mm. longer half terms, maybe like two two mm. weeks as opposed to the one week. Mm. And then summer holidays are typically like nine weeks as yeah. opposed to, like, I think it's a standard six weeks, which it may be different now because mm. obviously it was a long time ago. But yeah. but yeah, I spent a lot of time in Sussex. And I think, it, yeah, it kind of just exposed me to one, becoming independent, you know, being away from your parents at a young age, you're forced to kind of, I mean, thankfully I had my, my older brother was there when I, when I went there and my sister came as well, just a few years after me. And when I left, my younger brother came. So we all went through. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, no, it was, it was a good experience. What was the differences for you? Because London, 
it's different from Sussex. The reason why how I know is because I, I, I um, lived in Brighton for uni, so yeah. I know it's kind of got a different yeah, yeah. vibe. Yeah. It's kind of got a bit of a different culture. It's a little bit slower. London is mm. a bit more hustle bustle. Fast Everybody's yeah, yeah, exactly. very, very fast yeah. paced. How did you, like, what was the differences for you? Do you know what? It's, it's interesting because the school, the school Christ Hospital, mm. Christ Hospital was like, a, it was a bit of a bubble. So we're on this like huge campus. Mm. We don't ever, didn't ever really go much to the, the, the town, which was nearby was called yeah. Horsham. We didn't really ever, I mean, on, until you get to like the last two years of the of the school, um, you're you're allowed to kind of go there and get the train and, you know, go and see different areas of Sussex. But it's a bit of a bubble. Yeah. You know, we're just seeing different, you know, meeting tons of different people from tons of different kind of backgrounds, walks of life. If you ever have a chance to Google the, the uniform, you'll give yourself a good laugh. <laughs> the uniform is crazy. Like good, crazy or bad? <laughs> I say, I wouldn't say bad because we were all wearing it. So basically okay. it was like a, it was like a long blue coat. Yeah. We had these like, black shorts that come just over the mm. knees, yellow socks, okay, black shoes, and then wow. the coat that we were wearing had all these silver buttons <laughs> on there, white shirt underneath with this like yeah. band type thing that would come out. <laughs> wow. It's a bit mad. I'll show you when we, oh when we leave. Oh my gosh. It. That is, that sounds like something out of Harry Potter. I'm thinking <laughs> it's of the Literally, road, right? that's yeah. exactly what people say. Yeah. Oh my gosh, maybe that's where they got inspiration from. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> what, what, in terms of schools, were you like really into like your studies or was it? Not really, because no, really. okay. like when I was growing up, mm. my sole aim was to play professional football. That was ah, all I wanted to do. Okay. I was obsessed with playing football, watching football, mm. everything football. So when I was in school, I guess I did enough to kind of mm. get by, but my priority was always just to go out with the boys and play football mm. in the evenings in the school campus and whatnot. And when I got to then like the latter years, when I was like 16, 17, obviously playing in the, the, the teams in school, but also trying to play like some Sunday league, uh, mm. for Sunday league teams when I would come home for the weekend yeah. and see if like, you know, you want to get spotted, you want to play in as many areas as you possibly can. Of course, when you're trying to play professional football, the best thing to do is to be in an academy. Yeah. But obviously whilst I was in a boarding school, that was, I wouldn't say it was a barrier because it was obviously, you know, getting your education is super yeah. important but it meant I had to maybe be a bit more creative in terms of how I was potentially going to play. Then when I went to uni, I went to Brunel. I was kind of still playing a bit of semi-professional and mm. seeing what kind of avenues I could kind of get into. Then when I finished uni, I actually went to America to try mm. and play and I went to trial for a couple of teams. Then in 2013, I went to Norway. 2015, okay. I went to Austria. So I was kind of going a bit all over the place. Wow. Trying to play. Um, didn't obviously make it in the way that I would have wanted to. Like mm. I kind of got my foot in the door here or there, but... You know, I had some great experiences mm. going to these different countries and mm. I guess, you know, trying to explore something and, you know, trying to cultivate a dream, which obviously didn't quite work out. But mm. that was really my my passion and my desire. Okay. Not, I wasn't really into my studies, which is actually really ironic because now that I'm so focused on the kind of health, well-being, mm. scientific cap on, like you couldn't have paid me to pay attention in like <laughs> chemistry, biology when I was in school. I didn't care. Yeah. But now, because it's such an ingrained part of me, and I've you know I'm learning so much and yeah. sharing that information with others, mm. I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's so interesting. You you say that because I also say to people about money and personal finance. I've always been interested in business, mm. but specifically finance and personal finance. Same thing. I wasn't yeah. really. I wouldn't say I was super interested in it. Yeah. And now I'm super super mm. interested in it. I don't know if there's something that goes on in terms of maturity when you mm. get to certain age or you know you get some sort of enlightenment that yeah. you're like oh actually let me revisit something that maybe wasn't yeah. such a maybe yeah. actually i'm actually really passionate about it it is it is very very interesting yeah what what why were you so like interested in becoming a footballer what was that about I just really enjoyed playing football. Like I re and I realized from quite an early age that I was actually really good. But again, <laughs> we know the, the game of football is such a, such a difficult game to, to break really into. Tough, like, yeah. like I've met countless players who are unbelievably talented, but for whatever reason, just didn't make it. Didn't make it. Didn't make it work. Whatever yeah. it may be, and it's not the path for everyone. And like, you know, there were a few years after when I decided to stop playing. There was a bit of bitterness there, and but thankfully, I'm not. You know, not anywhere in that place anymore and mm. just really grateful with the direction that my life's heading in now. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just from a young age, just watching all of these like, you know, Euro 96 and all of these tournaments and just yeah. thinking, yeah, this is what I what, what I want to do. And every time I play, there was just j just an obsession with it. So yeah. So yeah. Mad. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, football is a, is a tough old game and I mm. think there's a lot of element of luck being at the right place at the right time 100%. as well. Like it's, yeah, it's not easy. So you mentioned that you went to Brunel University. What did mm -hmm. you end up studying? So I did sports science for a year. 
but I wasn't really paying much attention again because oh, I was so okay. focused on football. I wasn't yeah. really paying much attention. Two modules didn't go the way that I would have wanted mm. them to go. So they were saying you can either take a year out or come back and choose a different um, a different course where there's space. So I ended up just going back and doing uh, film and television for three years. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sports I mean, science, yeah, film and yeah, television. I mean, it wasn't really like... Again, it wasn't really something that I wanted to do, but mm -hmm. I guess you know, I think it was, it was something that I thought, okay, let me just let me just get onto it because the other the other option was to do economics, and I wasn't yeah. really interested in economics. Mm. But I mean, to be honest, it was quite an interesting course in the end. So, okay. I guess you picked up some decent skills from that. Yeah, some yeah. skills <laughs> around kind of maybe filmmaking. I mean, maybe even some of the yeah. stuff that I do with my content editing. Yeah. Maybe it's. I mean, your content that. is good. It's very high quality. Yeah. So yeah, sure. <laughs> definitely, definitely <laughs> maybe it definitely helped. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So the health journey. Where did that start? How did we? How did you get there? Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting question. So, I would say so. Like as I mentioned, when I was in Cross Hospital, I was playing a lot of sports. So I played football, rugby, tennis, cricket. I was swimming. So I was doing like multi sports. So I was very sport focused growing up, but I didn't really have the kind of understanding of health beyond like oh get get all of your protein from meat get your calcium from milk and that was really all i knew or cared about mm. so a lot of and obviously growing up in a Ghanaian household you're eating a lot of fish a lot of eggs a lot of meat like just the standard how you know how we eat and then got to a point where sort of around 2017 where i was becoming a bit more kind of open-minded to a lot of different things not just the health journey um or the potential start of it but just a lot of things and I remember my sister told me about a documentary that was on Netflix, which mm. kind of explored the link between diet and disease. And it mm. kind of just perked my ears up because I was like, this is nothing that I've never heard of. I didn't ever think that what we eat had an impact on our health. And so she told me about it. It was a documentary called What the Health. And I, I also do caveat that by saying that nutrition documentaries can be quite biased. Yeah, if They're pushing yeah. you in a direction that they want you to go yeah. in, of course. Yeah. But for me, when I watched it, it was such an eye-opener and it, I had enough there that I was like, well, let me go down this rabbit hole and basically shift to a plant-based diet mm. pretty much overnight. So I watched it at the time with my girlfriend who went on to become my wife. Unfortunately, in 2021, she passed away, you know, God rest yeah. her soul. Um, but we watched it together and we were just like, wow, this is, mm. this is unbelievable. So I was just like straight away shifted mm. to a plant-based diet. But then there was that process wow. of learning. Just like that? Yeah, just overnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, She did it for maybe a little bit less time than I did. Oh, my God. But I was okay. like, it, I just found it so interesting. Because mm. obviously I still wanted to optimize it for training, for health, mm. for performance, for th so things like that. So I was looking at how, like, where am I going to get key nutrients? What am I missing out on if I remove meat from my plate? How do I need to do this properly? So, yeah, there, it was a process of, like, you know, learning and, you know, approaching different foods and looking into different foods that I'd not really eaten before. But I started, you know, really like taking on some incredible benefits that I yeah. never would have kind of expected. Like my mm. sleep went through the roof. Okay. I had more energy. I felt lighter. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had more mental clarity. So I was just like, well, okay, I'm just going to continue this. And ah, then I just okay, kept so on, yeah. So okay. I kept on doing it. I kept on learning, kept on reading all of the, you know, loads of scientific papers that I was reading loads of books, you know, looking at different YouTube videos from kind of well-known mm. plant-based doctors in the space. And I think not only did it give me an understanding of plant-based nutrition, but it gave me an understanding of health overall mm. in terms of like nutrients of, that are important, for example, like zinc, the importance of zinc for the immune system, mm. for hair and nail health. I didn't know any of that before I watched What the Health. So it wasn't just about going plant-based, it was about I'm now widening in my scope of understanding for nutrition and health and well-being yeah. as a whole and then i'd say sort of in the last couple of years i've really now started to expand and you know really research other areas of health that are really important so like sleep mm. training and continuing to optimize a plant-based diet so yeah. and then so so around about six to nine months i think it was after that that was when i was like right okay i'm learning so much here let me just start sharing stuff on Instagram. Okay. I had an Instagram account, but it was a bit dormant. I wasn't really using it because yeah. I wasn't really the biggest fan of social media. Mm -hmm. And there's still elements of it that I don't <laughs> like today. <laughs> Rough and the smooth, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But I thought, I, I felt almost compelled to just share a lot of the teachings that I was coming across and see if it could kind of help anyone, you know, sharing recipes, sharing, you know, results of scientific papers about different things with relation to mm -hmm. plant-based nutrition. Um, and then it just started to pick up from there really. And mm -hmm. then, 
again, it was really led by passion because yeah. I'm super passionate about it. I mean, I never would have thought that it would have led to me actually being able to kind yeah. of make money from it, which is quite interesting. Yeah. But I still treat it as just like, this is, I want to just give value, give mm. value to people, not think about, oh, I need to do this for a certain paycheck or anything like that. So yeah. Yeah, just super passionate about it. That's amazing. And it's amazing to hear that you've gone full turkey because I know I, I know some people that will that try to do that. Mm. You know the funny thing is now that you say that, I've you probably watched it. Cowspiracy made yeah. me feel like that. I yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. do do it yeah. fully. Yeah. But I let's say I became more conscious mm. of what I was eating and then I was like, you know, let's let's introduce mm. variety into your diet because mm. like you you say we don't actually get taught this stuff i mean we do get taught science but we don't get taught basic. nutrition yeah we don't yeah, get basic taught nutrition, basic yeah, nutrition. Exactly. Yeah. yeah which is strange <laughs> when you think about yeah. we get taught like okay yeah, like is it called physiology what yeah is it called? All like, like, like the how the body looks yeah but the consuming of it no we don't it's very that. true and that's yeah. something that i you know whilst i do think it is a parental responsibility mm. to kind of educate their kids but even still that those parents they've gone through the school system without learning anything about nutrition mm -hmm. so it's difficult and you know kids nowadays like in schools they're taught all sorts of stuff that really doesn't translate to how you're gonna live well yeah. you know i think we i'm sure there's been you know tons of conversations you know kids aren't taught about money management yeah. or anything that can actually help them in life and something as important as nutrition even the basic like just base level understanding of nutrition no one has any idea. And yeah. then what you end up getting is a population of adults who largely still eat like children because they don't have the understanding or the knowledge. Good and point. now that they're working, they don't have the time yeah. to look into it, which is why I want to kind of give people that information because you know we're all on social media these days. Mm. So if you can come across something that can actually teach you something and maybe give you a little bit of you know a, a direction in which to go in, then that's what I'm you know what yeah. wanting to do. Yeah, you know, one of the things actually linked to that, and I think even when people do have the desire to change, mm. it's very tough to stick to that habit. So how did you, you know, even though you went full turkey like yeah. overnight, how did yeah. you kind of stick to that? Like what were the things that you were doing? Uh, to, to the thing with me, when I when I go to change something, I would, I'm always very compelled to change really? something. Yeah, Okay. nothing will really shift my mind. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. I won't really dip in and, because I think one of the, one of the key, one of the things that I've realized as well mm. now that I understand how difficult going on a health journey, plant based or not, actually is because society doesn't actually champion health. So when you actually go down That's a true. journey of trying to optimize your health, trying to better your diet, trying to improve your sleep habits, reduce alcohol, things like that, you're actually going against the fabric of society because society people in society consume a lot of alcohol. Convenience foods are very popular, so you might even end up in a situation where you know, whether it's friends, family, co-workers, if they start seeing you eat healthily, they might actually start to ridicule you. Oh, you know, what's that on your plate? Or are you doing your gym thing again and this and that? But what that really is, is it's, it's a bit of a warped projection from, from the other person's side because their stagnation in many ways is being challenged. So if you, you know, put yourself out there from the health standpoint, you're gonna challenge what's around you because society, this is not normal for society. Yeah. So yeah, it's a really interesting way to kind of approach it. And that's one of the reasons why maybe a lot of people find it hard to yeah. stick to, because you also need that kind of, whether it's community, you need that foundation, the people around you supporting you. Because, you know, as humans, we, we like to be a part of the, mm. the whole, the collective, you know what I mean? So if you're the only one who's maybe eating well and everyone's kind of doing whatever <laughs> they're doing, you might feel left out. But for me, I don't care. Like yeah. if I know, if I'm convicted that what I'm doing is right, I'll keep doing it. It doesn't yeah. matter what anyone else says because eventually people will come on board. It's a good point. And at the end of the day, it's your own health. Exactly. <laughs> He's coming to save exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> you can only save yourself. So yeah. if you let the opinions of other people yeah. tear you away from optimizing your diet or trying to go more plant-based, thinking yeah. like diversity into your diet, it's not a good place to be because yeah. at the end of the day, it's your body, it's your health. And yeah. if you know that what you're doing is beneficial, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. Yeah, I agree. So what? So you mentioned some health benefits. What Can you elaborate a bit more on the health benefits that you've mm. seen since becoming vegan? So, I mean, look, a lot of the health benefits you, you probably wouldn't be able to see without maybe doing a blood test. Okay. So, I mean, one of the interesting things that I didn't actually do a blood test before I went vegan. So mm. if I look at my blood now, I would see that my things like my LDL cholesterol, which is the cholesterol, so it's the, to get a bit sciencey, 
So there's a uh, ApoB containing lipoproteins, which actually can cause fatty plaque in your arteries. So when you go more plant-based and you reduce your saturated fat intake, mm. that level comes down. Mm. And then, so you've got things like that, overall kind of triglycerides, how much fat is in your blood, that will come down. Mm. So by doing, one of the things by going plant-based, you're really dramatically reducing your risk of having a cardiac event. So mm. heart attacks, strokes, those types of things, you dramatically reduce your kind mm. of risk of having that essentially. Wow. And then, you know, the, a lot of the science points towards reducing your risk of other chronic diseases like obesity, type 2 diabetes, things like that. Um, obesity from the standpoint of that, because you're eating such a fiber rich diet, you're becoming, you're very satiated. You know, a lot of fiber in, improves your gut bacteria, like diversity in that regard. There have been some studies that have looked at gut bacteria and having more diversity and basically mm. meaning less risk of chronic diseases like obesity and type 2 diabetes. So, yeah, I know that by eating the way that I'm eating, I'm reducing my risk of a lot of chronic diseases that basically afflict a lot of society out there. Wow, 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 wow. And and obviously as well, it seems like general health as yeah. well is, is improving. There was something that I saw on your page that was very interesting where you were talking about lifespan versus health yes. span, yeah. right? Can you break that, for the people that don't know what I'm talking about, can you yeah. break that down a little bit? Because yeah. I feel like, what you're talking about kind of alludes to actually both both yeah. aspects yeah exactly Look, i think one of the things that i'm very passionate about is longevity mm. and actually like, we don't want to get to the age 70 but not be living very well like you'll be on three four five medications you know be quite immobile like, look, modern medicine's doing an incredible job of allowing people to live longer through a lot of these kind of medical interventions, which, you know, some of which are necessary, some of which I do think we over medicate in society. So leaning into lifestyle habits like your diet, your nutrition, your sleep, that will extend your health span. And by health span, I mean the amount of years that you're actually living in good health, because, you know, taking on these, taking on the responsibility, you'd be in a much better position at 74, 75, living life on your own terms, still being able to play sports, go to the gym if you wanted to do that, walking with no, you know, with no assistance, than if you didn't engage in these habits in your 30s, 40s and 50s, and you get to your later years, and you've developed, whether it's type two diabetes, or you've developed some kind of fatty plaque in your arteries, and you've had to maybe have a stent because you've had a minor heart attack or something like that. So it's really about thinking about the actions that you're taking today, how they're going to benefit you when you're 60, 70, 80. Mm -hmm. And I'm, that's what I'm super passionate about because we have, we have it within us. We have it in the palm of our hands, essentially, to dial in lifestyle factors like resistance training, super important, cardiovascular fitness, eating a fiber rich diet, more plant protein over animal protein, mm -hmm. you know, sleeping well. There's so much information around sleep, you know, sleep disturbance and how that can, you know, disrupt so many functions within our body. And all of these things contribute to longevity. So it's not just good to live a long life, it's good to live a, a long and healthy life. Yeah. And these lifestyle habits basically contribute towards that. Wow, I love that. What food, what food do you think, probably through all your research, mm. has provided you with like the most health benefit, I, I would say? It's difficult to say one, because yeah. look, if, if I could say blueberries are a very you know potent fruit, antioxidant mm. rich, great for brain health, but if you're eating blueberries, but you're still drinking four or five nights a week, you're smoking, you're gonna negate the impact of yeah. these foods. I think it's not so much about a single food, it's about the overall dietary pattern, mm. right? So you could have blueberries within the context of a plant-rich diet, maybe some animal foods in there if you wanted to, but a very plant-rich diet with a lot of diversity, but then also on top of that, you know, looking towards lifestyle factors, like making sure you're training three to five times a week, making sure you're sleeping in line with your circadian rhythm. So, yeah. you know, staying up beyond 12, 1 a.m. is just no need to do that unless, you know, whether it's a, a wedding or whatever it may be, the occasional time, but consistent sleep and wake times. And that kind of health ecosystem almost will just put you in a good space. Yeah, okay. Love that, love that, love that. Question I have, this is like the opposite. Mm. Have you had any health concerns transitioning to a vegan diet? No, so I guess the only challenge that I came across mm. was because when you remove animal products from mm. your plate, you're removing quite a calorie dense food. Mm. So what you have to do is you have to basically add more voluminous food onto your right. plate. Okay. So what I did was essentially, so let's say I have chicken breast, right? Mm. Quite pretty high in calories. Mm. So I removed chicken breast and then added beans in the same kind of amount. But because beans are less calorie dense, you're basically 
I basically for for a period of time, short period of time, put myself in an unwanted calorie deficit because wow, I wasn't okay. adding more volume to my yeah. plate. So I ended up losing around one or two kg. But again, continue doing Bad. the research. <laughs> <laughs> Some people said that'd be good, right? Well, <laughs> yeah. But so I continued doing the research. Yeah. And then realize that you have to just eat a bit more food. Mm. But because you're eating plant foods are less calorie dense than animal based foods, you're eating, you know, you, you can eat more, but you'll be eating essentially the same amount of calories. Right. So okay. that was the only real challenge that I came across. Okay. And other than that, I've been yeah. in pretty good health for six years now. So okay, wow, that's uh, cool. How have you navigated, you know, you, you know, your background going yeah. in food there? Do you know what? How have you navigated that? I mean, I guess when I was kind of growing up and playing, obviously what, when I was you know living at my parents, I was eating a lot of Ghanaian food, fufu and jollof, yam, all that kind of stuff. You can still eat a lot of those foods. Mm. You can just swap out chicken for whether it's tofu or tempeh or beans. Mm. And a lot of, I think people maybe don't realize that a lot of foods that in, in West Africa or even around Africa as a whole, a lot of it's very much plant focused anyway. That's true. Yeah. There's a lot of beans, a lot of lentils, yam sweet potato yeah. greens plantain jollo like a lot of it's plant-based in many ways yeah i think maybe the, the diaspora we eat so much meat probably too much meat actually with not enough fibrous foods and diversity so yeah in terms of the the challenges there it's not been the worst thing in the world i mean yeah. i maybe don't cook as much of those foods in my at home but when i go to my mum's like you know she'll maybe make some jollof or wache or something like that and i'll just i'll have that and Mm. it's no problem so yeah. but you can you can make them healthy you know what i mean you, so if you you could maybe do jollof quinoa or jollof buckwheat mm. or bulgur wheat something like that and maybe add some whether it's organic tofu instead of chicken or fish mm. or whatever it is for your protein source so there are a lot of different things that you can do to kind yeah. of navigate it i mean when i did shift to plant based diet my mum did think i was a bit crazy <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit mad, but I mean, as I said, now when I go to visit my mum, like yeah. she'll cook me some amazing plant-based meals, okay. like really good. Yeah. So, so she's. Are you trying to? You're not obviously. I'm not trying to convert her. her. No, no, no. But my mum is super it. healthy anyway. Like, yeah. my mum was the one who told me about like a lot of a lot of these places that I get um, my nuts and seeds in bulk from. My mum was. My mum told me about them. Mm. So she does a lot of research into like really healthy nuts right. and seeds and legumes, and mm. she's always telling me, "Oh, I just bought this ten kilo bag of like dates or things mm. like that." So, mm. so yeah, she's uh, she switched on as well. Yeah. So you mentioned that you said you buy like nuts. What what do you mean by that? Like, sorry, I'm I'm nuts trying to learn. I'm so trying like, to educate. So yeah, yeah. So food like um, yeah, I, I maybe seen in some of my videos on social. Yeah. Like I have this. I have these like glass containers on yeah. my um, on my countertop, mm. and I have got like pumpkin seeds, hemp mm. seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, uh, walnuts, pecans, and I always like to add those into my smoothies and my oats because they're mm. super yeah, rich yeah, I saw in nutrients. One your smoothies today. Really good, healthy, yeah. you know, so many health benefits to these foods. So I always just try and get as many nuts in season as possible. And then I guess if we're thinking about the, the overall kind of spectrum of yeah. like the plant-based kind of wheel, if you could call it. So you've got nuts and seeds, they're a key part of it. Mm. Fruits and vegetables, of course, like everyone eats, well, mm. everyone should eat fruits and vegetables. And then you've got whole grains. So foods mm. like oats, buckwheat, bulgur wheat, and then more ancient grains that I like to eat as well. Mm. Fonio, teff, mm. millet, which is very popular in Ghana. And then legumes, so things like mm. chickpeas, black beans, lentils, yeah. kidney beans, and then you've got like soya beans, so in the form of tofu and tempeh, mm -hmm. navy beans, butter beans, so many different beans, like wow. I just love eating beans. So there's, that's yeah. kind of like the six kind of food groups that you want to be looking towards when mm -hmm. you're eating plant-based and just exploring mm -hmm. what's in those because there are so many different foods that yeah. are in those kind of six categories. Wow, and you, so you mentioned that you, that you get nuts from a certain place. Are they, are they nuts that are not like, not good are no so i mean I, I get them from um a wholesaler okay because, okay so in bulk exactly right, okay. because it, okay. it works out way more cost effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah so if you for example yeah. if i go to waitrose or whatever mm. and i try and get like a small bag of hemp seeds it'll cost me like six pounds but i can go online and get a kilo of hemp seeds for like 11 or 12 pounds fair enough so it just makes sense yeah especially if you're going to be consuming, consuming a lot of them more, exactly right? exactly okay. so i guess that's a that was also part of the transition learning yeah learning that instead of going exactly. to like Tesco where they're probably not I always found right and I don't know if you found this as well in, in you know your journey eating healthier doesn't doesn't seem they don't make they don't incentivize you mm. to eat healthier it's all the healthier options seem to be more expensive I don't know it, yeah again you know what? yes let me know no, yeah I think 
one if you're eating um mm. like from a convenience standpoint if you go to like a, a fresh food bar or a fresh mm. salad bar it'll probably be more expensive mm. than with you know un, than like a, a meat based counterpart yeah. but only because you're also paying for the convenience element as well mm. i think what people need to really understand is that the way that you're going to get the most out of a healthy diet and not not even necessarily plant based is just cooking yeah when you cook and you mm. buy a lot of fresh ingredients in bulk whether it's sweet potato rice beans lentils quinoa you know broccoli all these different foods you when you cook like for example meal prep would be so much more cost effective mm -hmm. than buying those meals separately That's outside yeah. so if you cook a lot you prep a lot of meal, mm -hmm. prep a lot of ingredients in bulk mm -hmm. you will save a lot of money yeah that's really the key but again yeah. it's it's about people finding the time yeah maybe not watching the netflix in the how, how do you find the time <laughs> it's important to me so yeah. the, the time is the time and then everything else that i do is in my life time. it is so the way i see it is that i build my life around my health as opposed to trying to build my health around my life and i think maybe that's a lot where a lot of people get stuck because trying to build your health around a busy life is very difficult if you've like if you're trying to get into it you, you know you work late hours and you know, you get home late, you know, how are you gonna find the time to cook? You wanna just have food right there. And I completely understand that. But then that maybe means you gotta maybe get a bit creative, whether it's you reduce a bit of time that you're watching Netflix or on a Sunday afternoon, for example, you just take one or two hours just to prep healthy ingredients, whether it's yeah. do some lentils in bulk, quinoa, whatever it is, some beans, and have those in the fridge. So that if you do work a late night, say Monday or Tuesday, you work late, yeah. you come home at eight or nine o'clock, You've got healthy food already in the fridge because you've prepped it on Sunday, yeah. as opposed to having to get on Uber Eats and pay 27 pounds for something which is not even gonna taste that nice anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it's about really prioritizing. What are, what are the priorities? Because mm. I think if you gave every single person on this planet mm. the opportunity to take a pill, which would guarantee them brilliant health, you know, healthy muscle mass, you know, great cardiovascular function, immune function on point, if you offered that to everyone, they would say yes. Everyone would say yes. Yeah. So it's not the fact that people don't want to be healthy. It's the fact that maybe people don't see it as a priority to make time for it, for it to become, you know, at the forefront of their minds. Yeah. So, and that's the thing, that's really the case. When, when people eventually do find that time and they find it as a priority, you will never go back because the way that you can, the way that you feel, I don't feel like a lot of people in society realize just how good they can actually feel if they mm. if they implement a lot of these habits and focus on your nutrition sleep at a good time train regularly like i think a lot of people maybe physically are probably at like 30 20 30 percent of their capacity yeah yeah that's very interesting <laughs> people do not know how good they can feel very 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 true <laughs> right like it's i think the way the modern society is right now we if you think about it you go on holiday oh i need a break but why not that you don't need a break we all need a mm. break but why you get into a point where it's like that mm. right the norm should mm. be that you should be functioning you should be optimal you should be fine and yeah. you're going on holiday to have fun yeah okay it's a little bit mm. of a break but mm. it's not to be fully refreshed oh, yeah. oh my god i'm burnt out mm. So good, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. We don't, we definitely don't prioritize our health enough, and we only prioritize it when it's almost too late, when it's, it's heart attack or it's a stroke or it's diabetes or it's something well, else. I think one thing about humans is that, you know, whether whether good or not, like suffering creates change. Yeah, because a lot of these, you know, chronic diseases they bubble under the surface for years. Like we're, you don't just wake up one morning and you just have diabetes just like that that's been bubbling for time. You go pre-diabetic, you, you keep becoming more and more insulin resistant based on your lifestyle habits. And then you get to a point where you walk in the doctor's office and then they tell you, right, you now have type two diabetes. Yeah. That didn't happen overnight. But the problem is that because a lot of these changes, they take so long and they have long, what's called like a long latency period. So it just keeps bubbling under the surface. People don't realize until it gets to that point. Like we as humans, if there's like an acute problem, like let's just say there's a fire outside this door, we see that as like an acute problem that we need to resolve right there and then. So we need to run out of the room. Mm -hmm. But if there's like a small problem that it does, which that kind of doesn't really affect us right now in this moment, but if it keeps happening over time, five years down the line, it then becomes a big problem. But yeah. by then it's really difficult to shift habits because your your ingrained your habits are ingrained into you, your eating habits, nutrition habits. That's why like, I speak to friends who have, you know, who are doctors who 
deal with patients who mm. have really serious chronic diseases, maybe a risk of amputation from things like diabetes, mm. and they just don't want to change their habits because they're so ingrained into them. And maybe they can't change their habits. Yeah. And I think, as you mentioned, as we mentioned at the start, that's where the education piece comes yeah. in. Because if you educate a population from a young age mm. around nutrition and the basic the basics of it and how it can impact your health, mm. you're less likely to have kids who want to eat sugar puffs every morning. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> true, so true, so true. So yeah, talk to us a little bit about health to wealth. Obviously, now you're you're opening that um, conversation. I guess why did you want to kind of take that next step? So yeah, so the wealth of health was really about kind of, as I said, I was just really passionate about sharing information around plant-based nutrition. So I wanted to kind of build like a platform where I could continue to just distribute that information. And it was really like, you know, writing long form pieces and things like that, and really just kind of demonstrating some of the learning that I was coming across and just mm. kind of putting that out into the community. And I guess that was like, an initial idea that I had. And I think it's kind of, I guess a lot of what I what I do now is mainly focused on social media, but I do have my email newsletter, which I still put out, which is okay. kind of still very much tied to my website. And mm -hmm. I write a lot more longer form, almost directly to my, you know, the, the subscriber. So I kind of have, I build relationships with subscribers to kind of still doing what I was kind of doing before, but just mm -hmm. directly to them through, you know, in their email. So okay. yeah, as I said, it was more just a case of wanting to, just share the information that I was coming across. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And I, I, I did notice that you are definitely more on the mm. more on Instagram. Yeah. Is that something that you feel like you're gonna continue doing long term? Yeah, I think. Look, I think Instagram is is like a, a good medium for the way I want to kind of develop my content. Like I did a lot of recipes on on the wealth of health on on my website, but I feel like you know people maybe wouldn't look at recipes online. I mean, people do sometimes, to be fair, people do sometimes look at recipes online, but I think sharing them via social media in that video format, mm. I, f I found just was really kind of impactful and people really enjoyed looking at it that way. So yeah. you know, sometimes I distribute recipes in my newsletter. Mm. So yeah, just trying to look at all angles in terms yeah. of how to distribute the information. Yeah, and now you're also looking at building a personal brand. Is that mm -hmm. is that something that you're actively also doing side well, by side or funny thing <laughs> about that, is that? I guess obviously you were at the the yeah. event, so yeah. it's funny because I've not actually like thought right. What I'm doing is this is my personal brand. Okay. Like it kind of just worked out as you know. I kind of was just sharing what I was doing, and I think a lot of the information because. Yeah. I guess I'm the figurehead behind it, essentially. It kind of just all aligned in that regard. And, you know, it's funny because if someone asked me, oh, how how's the best way to go about building a personal <laughs> brand? I would just be like, I don't know if I'd have, I'd have an answer which would, which would, which they would like. Yeah. Because I, I think it's really just about truly finding something that mm. speaks to who you are and something that you're passionate about. So like I, the things that I promote on social media and my newsletter, I live that life. This is what I do. Yeah. I'm not trying to talk about anything else that I don't live. You know, if I'm going to give information to people about living a healthy, health focused lifestyle, I better also be living that lifestyle as yeah. well. Cause otherwise there's no authenticity there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. And look, I think people have found that the, the, the nutrition information interesting and, you know, looking at some of the other information around sleep and training and I guess they align it to me. So that's kind of how it's really all grown. Yeah. And what do you see as the next step, I guess, for you? In, in this journey yeah. that you're that you're in, yeah. So I mean, just as we touched off online, so there's something that I'm hoping to sign a contract for soon, okay. um, a resource to kind of bring more of my understanding of plant-based nutrition mm. and health and well-being to life. And I think that will really be that's going to be a big project. But I'm looking forward yeah. to that. And yeah, I think look, I want to just keep being a figurehead and inspire hundreds of thousands mm. to millions of people yeah. towards better health. And that can be done in a number of different ways. Um, so I want to just keep exploring that, keep, you know, bettering my own health, keep learning about health. There's possibility of doing a uh, qualification as well okay. in, in nutrition. That'd so good, I think yeah. that'd be really good. I think that you'd definitely smash yeah. that. So that'd yeah. be really good. So, yeah. cause a lot of people ask, oh, what are your qualifications? What's your education? And I'm just like, I just really enjoy this stuff. Mm. I really enjoy reading the mm. scientific papers and looking at the evidence and things like that. But I guess what would be good is to kind of have that, you know, background of uh, kind of nutrition. Yeah kind of yeah qualification behind me so that's something i'm exploring as well yeah it's good because obviously that then opens another door that if you do want to i don't know start advising people you want yeah. to have one-on-one -on -one time with yeah 
with people and people want that mm. time with you, then you're able to, yeah. to do that comfortably with, yeah. you know. I mean, um, that's, that's something yeah. that, you know, a few people have reached out to me yeah. over kind of, whether it's email or social media. And a lot of the time I kind of, I don't do it because there's someone specifically looking for advice around a specific health condition. And I'm like, that's not in my remit at the moment, mm. but there are people who you know I've worked with and continue to work with at the moment who just want more like generalized yeah. nutrition advice, which I'm more than happy to give them. Um, and I find it, it's quite fun to do that, yeah. working one-on-one -on -one with people and you know, maybe that could become a thing as well. So as I said, just yeah. so many different ways in which I wanna yeah. continue what I'm doing. I love that, I love that. Okay, so obviously for me, I wanted to open this conversation to talk about health because like, as we were saying, I feel like it's like central to everything. If you have good health, then, you know, you improve in all areas. And so I was thinking, it's obviously not easy for people to introduce, you know, new things into mm. their diet. And even thinking about a vegan diet or or thinking about, okay, I want to add more plant-based foods to my diet. Mm. It's, you know, I feel like there's almost too many options. So. Mm. What I guess what should be somebody's starting point if they're looking to 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 introduce so the, there's a few things. I think as you mentioned there, there are so many options now, and that's partly down to a lot of these, you know, big corporations getting these packaged, processed vegan junk foods onto the shelves. And for unfortunately for the layperson, they think that these are a better option, quote unquote than the animal-based counterparts. But at the end of the day, it's still processed food. So what I would say, first things first, is just be mindful of those foods. Don't You don't want to have those processed, ultra-processed foods as the basis. You don't want to go towards those if you want to get more plant-based foods into your diet. If you want to have them every now and again, if that's what you want, then no problem, but focus on the whole foods. I would say just shifting to one, one or two meals a week. Like, it doesn't even have to be anything crazy. It can literally be, the easiest one is oatmeal. Do oatmeal. Maybe add a nice clean protein powder in there, get some berries, blueberries, raspberries, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, and that's your breakfast done. See how that goes. Or if you wanted to, if you if you like, oh, I can't get rid of eggs. Like, you know, maybe do eggs, scrambled eggs with some spinach, some mushrooms, some tomatoes on like a sourdough. That's got, you've got four different plant foods there already, you know. And speaking of the diversity and getting the numbers into your diet, you know, there's a lot of research around getting 30 or more unique plants into your gut a week. And that helps with gut diversity of the diversity of gut bacteria, which as I say, can reduce your risk of chronic disease and helps produce these compounds called short chain fatty acids that do help to, you know, reduce risk of disease and, and really kind of help to optimize our health. So yeah, one or two recipes a week, and then from there start to expand. And then one of the most important things as well is finding your why, like find the reason why you want to be healthy. You know, you don't want to just get plant foods or more vegan foods in because everyone else is doing it or because it's trendy. You know, ask yourself, you know, do you want to live a long and healthy life? Do you want to be around for your grandkids? Do you want to be around, you know, to be an example to your own children if you have them at the moment? So, and invariably, as I said, these questions will make people think, I think, you know, maybe we in society, we don't ask ourselves the tough questions enough. Mm. We maybe want to steer clear of those and, and take the easier route, which is understandable, but it doesn't, bode well for us in the long term mm. so find the reason why you want to be healthy yeah and really commit to it because if you have that reason why when the times get tough you'll stay with it you'll stick yeah. with it because you know you will reap those benefits in the long run yeah. you know i don't know any a single person who's gone on a health journey whether it's go whole food plant-based mm. or and get more plants into their diet training better sleeping better who doesn't report just feeling unbelievable just yeah. feeling better because that's really how we're supposed to be feeling we're supposed to be energetic we're yeah. supposed to you know be strong fit healthy yeah. sleep well this is how this is what our default is you know yeah yeah i completely agree i completely agree which is why i wanted to have this conversation with you and i want to have more health conversations for myself personally because yeah, yeah, yeah. i need to improve mm. my health but also to have this conversation you know you being from ghana me mm. being from nigeria mm. um you know people being from other countries where maybe not that it's not that we don't prioritize our health it's just that we don't have that conversation mm. about it yeah, enough yeah, right yeah, yeah and you know health from all from mm. preventing health to managing yeah. when you have the issues mm. to mm. you know to, to to post as well so it's it's having conversations like this you know the same way that you that you watched that documentary that mm. sparked mm. hopefully we can we can we can, we can spark um, an idea in somebody else as well and they can maybe gradually you know change change yeah. what, what they're doing now it's been great having this conversation with you what what have you got planned next week 
True. Um, well, in terms of next steps, yeah. as I said, yeah, hopefully, um, I mean, to be honest, I don't think my agent would be too mad about me saying it, but hopefully you'll be working on a book soon. Okay. Um, and as I said, bringing more to light that kind of plant-based nutrition, understanding around health and that resource to really give people a direction, almost like a, call it a Bible of sorts, obviously it's not, not the actual Bible, but you know, <laughs> a, a real kind of detailed resource to give people information to to really look to make change in their life. And yeah. as I said, you know, the passion I have for it and the understanding and the benefits that it had for me, and I want to share that with everyone else. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a lot, you know, you don't have to go fully plant-based, like you can maybe go 80% if you want to keep certain lean meats into your diet, but the more plants in terms of what the science says, in terms of what a lot of people report, the better, you know, so just trying to do that and, and really kind of yeah. being that kind of, uh, call it a figurehead, being someone who, you know, a lot of people can look towards to give them that value and, and help them make change in their life. Yeah. Amazing. I'm looking forward to the book. I, I yeah. definitely, hopefully, definitely you know, things get sorted with that. Yeah. Well, I won't, I won't yeah. ask you a timeline. I'll let, let <laughs> yeah, you yeah, 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 quietly, yeah. cause obviously I'm yeah. sure that you want to make it as, as, as good yeah. as, as you can and then release yeah. it. You know, yeah. that's the tough thing about a book, right? You've got to always want to make changes, but exactly. at some point you're just going to exactly. have to yeah, yeah. Uh, let it, let it go. Uh, where, where can people find you if they want to like know more and learn more from you? Yeah. So my website is www.thewealthofhealth.co.uk. As I mentioned before, I don't really write too many blog posts on that at the moment, but you can sign up to my newsletter and I put out a newsletter every one or two weeks. So you can sign up there. And my Instagram is Jeffrey Boydy. That's just my first and, se first and second name. Twitter's the same, Jeffrey Boydy, but just with an underscore at the end. I use TikTok occasionally, but mm. I, don't like, I don't like being on TikTok too much. <laughs> Why? Too much, too much nonsense on there. <laughs> it's too, much nonsense. too much, you know, just <laughs> brain crushing, soul crushing <laughs> crap on there. <laughs> So I tried to stay off there a bit, but I do put some recipes on there, but it's mainly just like a lot of the stuff that I put on Instagram anyway. So, so yeah, those are the main places to find me. <laughs> they just it made me laugh because of the uh, crushing stuff. You know what, it's true. You gotta be careful what you consume you on have social to be, media. Yeah, there's yeah. so much nonsense out there. And the funny thing is, it's the nonsense that gets pushed and gets the most views. In yeah, the, all the time. Know, it's just like, maybe, is it deliberate? <laughs> Probably, yeah, yeah. Probably. Well, that's another conversation yeah. for yeah. another day. <laughs> we'll be here all day if we're going to have that conversation. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been it's been great. It's been great actually sitting with you and learning from you. I feel like every time I have a health conversation, it makes me feel, okay, I want to go home. Mm. I need to speak to my wife. Okay, yeah. babe, let's, let's, let's yeah. start thinking about what, yeah. what we're doing. But you know what's funny? I'm actually, I can see that I'm kind of already getting there. Mm. And there's certain things like, okay, I want to start cutting this out or mm. limiting it. Mm. I don't... Mm feel that I need it. Like, okay, for instance, eggs, I realize I don't eat eggs as yeah. much. So mm. I'm like, oh, actually, don't even need it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't eaten yeah, yeah. it in a few weeks. Yeah. I'm not craving it. Mm. Yeah. Maybe I just, you know, maybe it's just a habit now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think I need it with 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 breakfast, but actually maybe I just yeah. take it out. So yeah, no, it's been it's been it's been an amazing conversation. Yeah. Um obviously wish you luck with the book. When that yeah. does come out, mm. we can definitely have a, another conversation. Definitely, man. See, see, and I think one thing that's just to touch on there is what, what you said about, you know, speaking to your wife and things like that, about making change. You don't need to make those huge changes right away. It can be just those really small incremental changes that build up over time to help then create that ecosystem of health. Because a lot of people what they try and do is make all the changes at once get overwhelmed and then go back to what they were doing beforehand. Yeah. So slow and steady wins the race, as they say, yeah. build those habits in slowly over time and then you'll have more chance of them being sustained over a period of time. Yeah. I was going to ask you for final words, but do you want to, do you want to have final words or do you want yeah, that to be, be your final, final words? words? That could be your final word. Um, yeah. No, I think, look, <laughs> as I said, for, you, you won't find a single person out there who mm. will say that health isn't important. It always is important. We This is the only body that we have. We have to treat it with respect. You know, we can't prioritize. Of course, things like money are important, but, you know, what's the, there's a saying that it goes, um, a healthy man has a thousand wishes, a sick man only has one. You know, it's important to realize that your health is your one priority. Mm. From there, that's when you actually be able to improve your life, you know, immeasurably. You'll be able to be better in business. You'll be able to be better in your relationships if you have that foundation of health. So really thinking about that as a priority will just transform your life. Love that, love that. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. It's been great having this conversation with you. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. Uh, watchers, listeners, hope you've enjoyed this episode of Takeover Experience and we'll see you next week's episode.